Okay, the Gregorian chant, product of the Middle Ages, it's still used today in the Catholic Church and um, some aspects of the music are still used today in, in other types of music, but it's largely a historical phenomenon. Um, it's worship music, it's meant to draw draw the worshippers' eyes off of the surroundings of earth and onto to heavenly things. It sounds kind of strange to our ears today for a lot of reasons. One, one reason is it's sung in Latin. We can't really understand what's being said, although we know it's some sort of, um, unless you know Latin, we know it's some sort of prayer or scripture or hymn-like um, idea. It also sounds different because it's kind of what's called a free rhythm or a free meter that you can't really stop your foot to keep track to the beat. It doesn't have what 20th century music has, which is a strong backbeat of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's kind of a free flowing, it's kind of like speech in, in a sense. It's, it's almost like half speaking, half singing, which, is, which makes it um, kind of similar to some opera music that came along later. It also sounds different to us because of the uh, because of the scales that they're using. Remember I said tonal music has to do with the, with the use of the major scale. And the minor scale. And the chords and, and so forth that goes with that. The Gregorian chants use other types of scales. They're actually called church modes. Mode is just another name for a scale, M-O-D-E. They might use a scale that sounds like this. So that that next to last note, step seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to eight, is larger than the last step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of a major scale. It doesn't have that sound because seven to eight type of, type of um, situation going on. And it also sounds different because it's mostly monophonic, meaning one voice only. Now voice here doesn't mean the human voice. Voice here means melody. It's, it's, a, um, it's a part writing term from the, from the rules of polyphony. It's one melody and one melody only. No matter how many people are singing, they're all singing the exact same melody. You don't hear any harmony. So the melody in a Gregorian chant is all there is to it. If there's five people singing it or 50 people or just one person, it's only one melody. So it's not complicated. That may be why um, a lot of people use this music uh, as relaxation music. It's got kind of a meditative quality to it. So the difference then in the Renaissance, which comes after the Gregorian chant, eventually people started adding um, other simple parts to go along with the original melody. Like it might just be someone holding out a note. Like that. Eventually, that note might start to have a little movement of its own. And that's kind of the way that early polyphony sounded. It still sounds kind of odd, but it, it's more than one voice now. It's, it's, it, it's two or more melodies happening simul simultaneously, which is polyphonic. That's one of the hallmarks of of the Renaissance, but by the time of the end of the Renaissance, music had become largely polyphonic. So you have your familiar soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, four parts, S-A-T-B, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and they each have their own melodies. Chords. That's more like the tonal music that, that we're used to 
today. So that's one of the hallmarks of the Renaissance. I've jumped now to the Renaissance from the, from the Middle Ages. The, the, the Renaissance took what had been monophonic music, made it polyphonic. It also, because music became, becomes more complicated when you add more melodies, it, the Renaissance is known as the era where the idea of notating music, music written out so that we can remember it, became more important because it's more complicated. It's easy to teach just a single melody to somebody else. You just sing it to them and then they sing it back. And most of the Gregorian chants were, were that way. They were taught by rote although we, they finally figured out a way to write those down also. But once you start adding other parts to it, you really have to write it down because it's just too complicated to remember, to teach somebody somebody. Um, you can do a lot of that without notation, but at some point it gets complicated enough that a need for notation existed. So the Renaissance, um, as they were discovering other things about science and, and, and humankind was advancing in lots of ways towards the end of the Renaissance, this idea of notation came into its own. And the Renaissance also finally had moved away from the church modes of the Gregorian chant. To the typical tonal music of the major and minor scale system. Where you have a goal goal is to reach this final chord, which is the chord that you started out on. So tonal music has some sort of goal, which we'll talk about more when we get to the Baroque era. That's the basics that I want you to understand about um, Gregorian chant and Renaissance polyphonic music. See you later.